Luayo, how you doing? Very well. How are you? I'm amazing, man. Welcome to Political Hope. It's my pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> Well, I mean, I'm super, first of all, I'm, I'm really grateful for John for connecting us, John Rulak. Um, and, and I'm excited also to, to ask you, like, uh, how you are, I mean, I guess the first question I always ask everybody is, what does political hope mean to you? Like, what does that mean to you? What is, what is that? Well, uh, to me, uh, political hope means a free political environment for all. So that's what it means to me. It's a free, free political environment for all. So that's what everyone hopes for. I mean, I feel that that's that's interesting because what you're doing with this Permadise Paradise, Paradise Institute is you're kind of connecting the politics of nature with the people, right? Because the people need things, right? And the nature provides. So how do you connect those things? So kind of give, give everybody a little bit of like a... a update on where this project is and then we can go dive into some of the cool stuff because you were showing me the data and the farmers and what they're doing but but first just kind of like lead in like how did this happen like what how did you guys create this political hope in your community well uh Pemagata paradise institute is based in uh, central malawi in chinji district next to the zambian border we are uh, a demonstration and training institute and uh, we demonstrate how locally available resources, resources local to Malawi can be used in Malawi to address the challenges that Malawians face. Malawi is a country, it's one of the landlocked uh, countries in Africa, the smallest, but over a third of the country is Lake Malawi. Mm. But unfortunately, um, over 50% of the kids under the age of five are nutritionally stunted. We are a country whose population, half of the population are poor people and quarter of the population live in severe poverty. And most of the people live on less than a dollar a day uh, for their survival. So as a demonstration, Pemakada Paradise Institute, as a demonstration, we demonstrate the possibilities, um, how we can create a political free environment mm -hmm. for all by focusing on, focusing on capacity building for mm. smallholder farmers and everyone. So the idea is uh, to help people or humanity understand um, the beauty of nature, you know, and mm. uh, the the uniqueness of nature, because nature is prominent. Nature is prominent in its own way. The way nature does its things uh, compared to humanity, very, very different. Uh, so we're trying to demonstrate how we can mimic the natural ecosystems in the way we live to provide yeah. for our needs in harmony with nature, not on the expense uh, of nature or sacrificing natural ecosystems to meet our human needs. So that's why we demonstrate the possibilities that these are the possibilities. But in terms of the possibilities, we're like, okay, where where is the resource base? Mm -hmm. So this is the reason why we try to uncover uh, the hidden treasures of Malawi as resource base to uh, design systems to meet our needs. So permaculture is a design science. Permaculture is just a design science, and everyone can de can design it to meet their own needs, their own world. They are. So in Malawi, we've got a permaculture demonstration system that demonstrates um, how Malawians could avoid hunger, poverty, malnutrition, resource depletion, um, and political, social, spiritual challenges by using resources which are local to Malawi. So for, for wow. people to, to, to believe us, we need to demonstrate that it's possible. So this is the reason why we've got a 16-acre piece of land where we grow over 200 different types of foods, of which 90% of, of the foods we never planted. Wow. And then if you look at the trees on the 16-acre piece of land, we have over 11,800 trees, of which 90% we did not plant. So that's wow. the power of the generation. Wow. So if we let nature take its course, nature would demonstrate a better way to grow food. Oh, yeah. demonstrate a better way to live in harmony with each other, a better way of uh, fair, a sense of fair share between people um, and, and, and um, all creatures on the planet. 
So this is the reason why we we demonstrate first and then we share the knowledge um, uh, to, to, to others, to the world, uh, to the global world um, through trainings. Um, so we conduct trainings uh, throughout, we focus on trainings. So already we, we, we trained wait, over- Wait, Lua, wait, Lua, wait, Lua, Lua, you're not trying to make a billion dollars? What? Well, the thing is, uh, we're not, we're not. <laughs> um, the idea is we simply live a simple life so that others can simply live. Um, the way we live our life, we live uh, a life that others can also benefit. This is the reason why we focus on smallholder farmers in the rural communities who are mostly marginalized. These are farmers who cannot manage to purchase fertilizer and chemicals. Mm -hmm. So knowledge is power, you know, knowledge mm -hmm. is power. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we take and share this knowledge on how we were able, we managed to um, transform a piece of land which was barren into paradise on planet how, Earth. How, 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 long, how long did it take you guys, 12 years to do that? No. So Pemakata Paradise Institute was established in 2018. We bought the land in 2017, of course. So when you're reading on when you're reading on our website, it says uh, Pemakata Paradise Institute was instituted in 2017. But actually, in actual sense, we bought the land in 2017, but up until 2018, we haven't done anything yet. Wow. So we, we we've been um um. And uh, we, we've been working on the land for um, close to five years now. Only five years, uh, over 200 foods, uh, and 90% uh, of it we never planted, you know. Wow. Over 11,800 uh, trees in five years. So this is how um, we could mm. be able to reverse the challenges that we face. So this is why we focus on these uh, Lula community. So on our demonstration, we've got uh, plenty of examples on how you can grow food from a square meter to uh, a thousand acres. So, um, you know, for example, if you take uh, a shower room, a shower room is just a ba basic um, structure where people go and take a shower. Right. But there's water, there's water every day that um that that remain unused so these are great examples that we help farmers on how to plant bananas for example Amazing. the only job you have to do is to go get a shower you go get a shower you're getting a banana <laughs> and the banana is sucking all the water to control mosquito problems and we are trying to help address malaria as well as providing food to people so it's a very basic double, easy way to double bone so just get it Double bonus, and one of the things I noticed, one of the, I was, I noticed you have a bunch of videos too, and you're you're always posting, and it's really great that you're also sharing what's happening there. I think that's really important nuance of what you're doing because I think a lot of times what people do is they do things and it's it's kind of blocked off from everyone else. But it's nice that you're kind of showing and open sourcing it for people so that they can also emulate it and do the different. And you're also honoring the community, right? Like I think it's beautiful to honor the the women farmers and the different farmers and actually show them, right? But one of the things I noticed was you guys are doing it regeneratively in the sense that you're not just growing monocropping a bunch of bananas, right? You're not monocropping a bunch of stuff. And I think that's where things have gone kind of wrong. And there, that's when you can also allow medicinal plants. So I wonder also, has the health of the community improved because they're eating more from the land and they're eating more from, you know, they're not going to like a, you know, looking for like Taco Bell or something <laughs> like, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Malawi is a country, it's one of the countries whose um, who depend mostly solely on agriculture. The economy is dependent on agriculture. And, um, you know, over 85% of the farmers are subsistent farmers in Malawi. But the problem is uh, farmers focus so much on corn. So mm. there's so much uh, corn production um, mm. in Malawi. And this is what, one of the... Uh, things that's bringing a lot of challenges, malnutrition, mm -hmm. uh, because most of the kids in the villages or er elsewhere are just fed corn-based meals. And this this leads to resource depletion because we can't like yielding, taking the same nutrients from the soils every year all the time because of the monoculture systems. So the promotion of monoculture systems now, you can see if you look at, at the political angle, um, that's not... Um, 
uh, politically sensitive, you know. So mm -hmm. we need to have systems which are designed in a political sensitive, as a system mm -hmm. which is ecologically sound, money profitable, social mm -hmm. justice, and political sound, you know. So um, that's 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 permaculture because it brings all of these things together. So when talk, when you talk about our farmers, the farmers whom we, we work with, these are farmers who are um, trained solely in designing systems which will, will be able to provide for their needs, not just uh, to provide for their food, but systems which are productive in phases throughout the year, but also resilient, considering the fact that, um, of course, we live, we live in subtropic region where we've got 12 solid months to grow food, but um, there are times of the year uh, where some farmers are affected by droughts, floods, mm, you know, yeah. these are, you know, natural catastrophes, uncertainties, of which a farmer needs to be aware of. So the, the, this permaculture design science helps the farmer to design a system which should be able to adapt, recover, um, maybe be able to um, to go through the catastrophe um, or avert the catastrophe in its own way. There, are, so the diversity helps the farmer to have a, a well diversified nutritious meal, but also have a garden which is productive in right. seasons throughout the year, but also resilient in terms of uh, natural disasters and the like. So we've seen our farmers um, benefiting a lot, not just our farmers, because it begins with us. This is the reason why we have Pemakata Paradise Institute as a model to the farmers. And the farmers act by our model. So whatever um, that is, is, um, is done the right way and does well at Pemakata Paradise Institute, the farmers follow suit and they do likewise oh. so right. um, that's why we've seen uh, um, uh, the changes in farmers diet uh, changes in farmers fields farmers mm. uh, farmers fields which were left bare uh, and then productive and protected uh, uh, fields which are covered for example with mm. uh, trees like really cedia mm. fish bean these are trees which drops biomass fixes nitrogen and uh, creates micro spaces for soil biology, Amazing. you know, and then the leaves are coppiced, um and, and, and incorporated in the soil as green manure. So nice. we're providing fertilizer to, 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 to the farmers, protection to the soil, food and micro spaces and um, habitat for soil biology, you Amazing. see. And then now you can see the connection there between creation and, and humanity. So that's a free political world that I was trying to mean in the beginning of the podcast. You know, and, and I, I'm curious, um, have you had any like, have you had any resistance from like the government or have you had resistance from corporations there? Like, has there, have you faced any challenges? Yeah, sure. Yeah. The challenges are there, um, especially a political challenge, number one, because, um, for example, the government, our government promotes a uh, subsidy program, the, the fertilizer uh, subsidy mm, program. Yep, yep. And this is this is mineral fertilizer, chemical fertilizer, I would say, um, and it's one of the things that's uh, uh, pushing farmers into the sake of dependency because mm -hmm. every every year they have to buy fertilizer in order to grow food. But then, because these are uh, small holder poor farmers in the villages, they do not have any other businesses right. uh, in order to raise funds and purchase extra fertilizer to grow more food in the next year. So they have to sell part of the food oh in order God. to raise more funds. So they are caught up in this cycle of dependency. Whereas in, whereby in permaculture, after training the farmers, we give them a starter pack of tools, in, which includes wheelbars, shovels, legs, nice. um, uh, sometimes water cans and hose. Then we give them a variety of seeds and seedlings as a starter pack to start with. And then we give them rabbits, chickens, and ducks. So, mm. well, a farmer has chickens, which will be multiplying mm. and producing uh, manure over time versus a bag of fertilizer, which oh, yeah. is all, which can be bought once and be used once. So this is oh, a, yeah. you know, one way uh, where, um, you know, some farmers or the government is going wrong. They're thinking of one one-time solution instead of a long term long term solution. So if you give a cow to a farmer versus a bag of fertilizer, the bag of fertilizer is just gonna be used once. Right. And the cow we used multiple times over time. Yep. You know, and yep. cows will be multiplying 
And then if you're thinking the fertilizer way, that means you are providing fertilizer every year but yep. without buying the fertilizer, the actual yep. fertilizer. So yep. that's one of the challenges because there are these conflicting messages. Um, our message, which is organic, promotes organic and regenerative systems. And then these messages, which promotes non-organic um, systems like um, fertilizer, chemicals, hybrid right. seeds and the like. But well, if I you look at our portfolio and all these farmers, you can see the tree nuts that is there. You can see farmer's foods, you can see vegetable gardens, all of yeah. that. So this is a clear indication that we can reverse hunger, poverty, malnutrition in a garden. Yeah. And and I also wonder, I mean, it, you have a more particular, like sensitive uh, perspective to this, but has has creating community around this permaculture project supported these rural and small farmers? Because I feel a lot of times farmers struggle um, to switch from the fertilizer space because they're doing it alone but this seems like it's a community effort does that help it does yeah it's a community effort so the thing is uh we work we work in partnership with um, um other partners uh, which includes agroforestry regeneration communities nice. um, these are partners who mostly help us with fundraising and support the trainings um the tools and resources but um, as farmers themselves, they are also partners because they contribute mm -hmm. uh, part of uh, their knowledge, they contribute land, they contribute energy and the like, and they work as a community. Mm -hmm. So this is um, um, one way um, to ensure um, uh, the highest adoption rate of the knowledge, mm -hmm. as well as the sustainability of the project itself. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, when 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 we train one farmer, she goes or oh, he goes and train nine more farmers and create nice. a farmer campaign. Nice. So they work as a club, not as individuals. But when it comes to implementation, they implement these things at their household level, farm level, uh, and beyond. But so, I, and you guys now, also you guys also have music. I saw some of the videos, and I'll share them in the in the links. But you guys have music. You guys have cultural. So you guys aren't just doing something for food. It's also about celebrating the community right music 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 is one of the strongest tools to communicate one of the strongest tools to celebrate one of the strongest tools to soothe yourself it's um it's a therapy on its own music is a therapy so it's a very strongest tool that we use in our trainings in our advocacy in our meetings in our whatever so you will see us um doing um or dancing uh, singing with the farmers just to communicate celebrate and um heal each other and heal the soil heal the earth heal the planet using music so okay music okay can, one of the can, can, can i come there and join you guys someday that's like i love that I'm, I'm indian you know we like dancing can i can i come join you guys for sure yeah why not <laughs> why not <laughs> um you, you can and you will see uh, most of uh, the videos that we post on our website, YouTube channel, LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, you'll see us dancing. And we, okay, in terms of the training, we do not just train farmers. We train students from uh, different universities, which includes United States. Uh, we have students from Germany. We have um, all sorts of uh, students come, who come from different universities. But we also of people from the government, government extension officers. We have um, uh, experts from different organizations. So it's a big institute that um, provide technical know-how on how to design permaculture systems nice. from a household level to a farm level. And we also offer consultancy services. So on these consultancy oh, nice. services, we go around and help uh, people establish farms. So nice. um, yeah, so we work uh, we work with um, uh, all sorts of people, which includes um, uh, boys and girls, women and um, men, uh, farmers or experts. We have, and the vision is to reach one hundred thousand farmers by twenty twenty five. Yeah. Oh, well, I hope this podcast helps with that because people listening to this might get inspired, or they might. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of like um, orphanages out there in Africa. You know, if if more of them were kind of adopting this and and also educating some of the the kids who are in those orphanages, it would be huge, right? 
You're right, very much right. The sad reality about orphanages, orphanages uh, promote handouts, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. We're talking of mm -hmm. orphans with no parents and they're there at the orphanage, they're never taught life skills, right. you know? They are there to learn about formal education, they go to formal schools, and no skills um, are shared to these families, to, to, to these um, mm -hmm. orphans, you know? Mm -hmm. So they reach a point where they graduate from the orphanages and they stand on their own, and they they don't even know how to grow their own food. They don't know no. how to uh, build a house. They don't know how to do so. This is the reason why we, uh, we think permaculture is a great tool for everyone, including orphanages, because mm -hmm. in orphanages, the orphanages will be able to grow enough food to feed the orphans, and the orphans exactly. will be uh, will be taught uh, life skills, yes. which will make them responsible adults later on. Because there's a point. The good thing with um, being an orphan, it's got an aut automaton. There's a point where you you can never be an orphan at, uh, anymore because there you have kids, so you cannot say you cannot say I'm, I'm an orphan, but I've got two kids. You know. <laughs> so the, the good thing with uh, being an orphan, it, it's got an uh, automaton, uh, a limit. There's a limit where you can say, uh, I'm no longer an orphan. I'm a responsible adult, and I need to be responsible for my own actions. I need to take care of myself. So uh, the people around me, including the, uh, my kids and siblings. Yeah, I mean, that's a great point you make there, too, because it's it's important to empower the youth. Um, but also, I think it's a part of the mental and mental, spiritual and physical health. Right. When we start to understand the land and we connect with the land and we actually start to contribute to the land. And we see even when we plant some seeds, we see something happen from that. We dig a hole and we see something happen from that. Right. It's it feels really good for the body and the mind and the spirit. And sometimes a lot, I feel what's happened over the past, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of just assuming right here, Luayo, so you got to correct me, but in India, we had a lot of colonization, right? And that, and that colonization didn't happen in 1940s when Britain left. They, they just brought the green revolution, right? And then they're like, here's fertilizers, here's seeds, you guys need to plant this stuff. So it continued the colonization, even though it wasn't physically there, right? And so yeah. a lot of people, a lot of local people in India, like local farmers, I come from farmers in India, northern, from Punjab, and yeah. th those farmers have, like all the youth have forgotten their relationship with the land, and now they're having a lot of substance abuse. They're drinking alcohol, doing drugs, social media addicts, right? But they're not, with, they're not farming enough. And, but we come yeah. from farmers. Is that something similar that's happened over there? Very similar. So in Malawi, just the same. Um, we also come from the same background, the, uh, the colonization and the like, and we believe whatever we see on TV and newspaper is right. Um, and then to a point that uh, most of the people in Malawi, including kids and farmers and politicians, are forgotten uh, where we're coming from, what, 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 what our parents have been um, growing or used to grow and eat and why and how, you know. So we've um, detached ourselves from the real life. Uh, we, we've detached ourselves. So if you look at um, Malawi uh, on the map, it's the smallest but richest country. Oh, wow. You know, because um, we, we, we have um, lots of resources, 12 solid months, 12, 12 months that we can grow food because wow. we live in a subtropic region. And um, there's never a time of the year where we can say, when we can say, it's too cold or too hot that we can't grow nothing. But um, almost every time of the year, there's something that we can still grow. So we're still coming from the same background and um, we copy everything that we read and see, uh, note uh, what our ancestors or parents um, used to, to do. The sad reality about um, uh, the political world, we grew up eating native plants only to realize that um, we, we call them orphan seeds and uh, uh. Uh, we, we say they are not certified and we cannot continue growing them. So most of the crops uh, which have been grown are hybrid and uh, GMO, genetically modified Damn. or genetically and, and, and foods. And um, most of the kids, because of that, we've lost our own natural resources. We've lost, in Malawi, we've got over 600 different species of foods. And wow. uh, it's only sad to 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 know that we only value one crop, which is not even from Africa or Malawi. Uh, yeah. So we value 
maize or corn, which is not from Africa. That's crazy. In, so, yeah, so Malawians put so much money, so much effort, so much time into something like trying to grow maize, forcing to grow maize, which is not even from Africa. Forgetting that we've got our own crops like Amaranth, uh, uh, Blackjack, Gun Soldier. Um, we have all these things which are native, local to Malawi. And the good thing about these things, they are adapted to our conditions and they do not need fertilizer and chemicals. They can do well in um, severe conditions or marginalized soils. Wow. Very depleted. So you see, there's something there that um, happens naturally. And then uh, others think that we always need to involve ourselves in the farming process in order to have a something. But if you look at nature, nature doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. You can become an observant harvester, mm -hmm. um, not manager. But the problem mm -hmm. is when it comes to farming, we associate ourselves in the whole process. We think we always need to involve ourselves in mm -hmm. planting, managing, and harvesting, not mm -hmm. knowing we can become observers, you know, and learners. You uh -huh. know, and then in the end, we 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 will be harvesting. So we just yep. become observers and harvesters, not managers and harvesters. Because if we if we are managers all the time, uh, there'll be a time where we 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 may get sick. Yeah. You know, so yep. that we have plen plenty of time in the world, but not that enough energy to work. Yep. Uh, that's the sad reality about humanity. And then at some point we get old. We have yeah. all the time in the world, plenty of money, but then we have that energy yep. to work. So this is the reason why we need to learn, understand from nature and design our systems the natural way, in a way that even if you're sick or old, you get old, you will just be observing, interacting, and harvesting and benefiting. So this yeah. is the beauty of and, and the health and the healthiest people I've ever met in my life that are old, like the old people who are healthy, they're with they're they're doing things with nature. <laughs> Even my father, you know, he was so healthy and he was always gardening and doing things in nature and um and even exactly. the people now, like they're the healthiest people are the ones who are doing things with nature. Exactly. Those who detach themselves from from nature, they attach themselves to problems. So that's the that's the that's the problem with humanity. So we detached ourselves from nature and attached ourselves to problems, and we're trying to use the very same problems which caused these problems as solutions to address the problems we are facing. So and uh, I, I mean, we wonder why we are not able to address the challenges because we are using the same problem which caused the same problems or the same ideas which caused the same problems to address the problems and. Totally. By causing even more problems, you know, it's a, it's a loop, um, and you know, it's it's also another reason why I feel. I mean, I'm really glad that we got to speak, and I hope we continue to keep a channel open because I feel th like it's folks like you and the work that you're doing to support the rural community in your com in your in your in your country. Uh, I, I like it's you who should be speaking at these COP27 things, right? You know, when they have these like things where they bring in all these people together and how are we going to solve the climate problems? Like we need to be talking about these ideas, right? That are going to bring, that are going to empower people from the ground up, from the, from the local areas up rather than like, how is a corporation going to solve the problems, right? Um, uh, yeah, for sure. And you know, one of the problems, the biggest problems with the COP, we talk about climate in a microclimate. So, and we wonder why we are not able to address the, the general climate because we're talking about climate in a microclimate. So we can't be talking about climate in a, in a hotel. It's the same as talking about food production in a hotel. Uh, how on earth would you be able to produce uh, food on a PowerPoint? You know, right. so when, <laughs> when we are talking about food, we need to be um, um, uh, talking about food on the farm. You know, we need to yep. be... Um, convening um, food conferences on the farm, climate on the farm. climate conferences, not in a hotel, <laughs> uh, in a room, but climate um, in a in a general climate, not in a in a in a micro climate. But we can talk about climate in a in an open space and talk about the real issues, not real issues that we took photos of, but real issues that people can see, can feel, feel can. Well, can feel it, you know. You go yeah. outside and say, you know, it's very hot. It's very cold. People need to feel this, not yeah. uh, um, using sophisticated ma ma machines or whatever gadgets um, to to test how how hot, how cold it is, uh, how the weather changing, whatever. So that's one of the one of the problem. 
So of course, yeah, um, I could be one of the people speaking uh, at these conferences, but not uh, talking about climate in a microclimate, but talking about climate uh, well, you, in a big environment. It'll be better if you they come to they come to Malawi and come to the farm, right? And then they can they can know what to do. This is yeah. If you, if you ask everyone in Malawi, I stopped uh, for now. I stopped uh, attending every conference in the conference room. I only attend conferences. Uh, which uh, which are talking about food on the farm. Yes. Um, because I have attended enough of these, and uh, I need time to focus on um, the solution, not pro the problem. Because uh, if I continue this, I'll become part of the problem. But yes. I would like to be part of the solution. So this is this is why um, I stopped um, attending this for now, so that I can have ample time to focus yes. and redirect the same energy at the same time that I could have lost um, sitting in a air conditioned room. Um, I could have been sitting under a tree um, and getting- And eating some fresh, bananas. Uh, eating bananas and passion <laughs> fruits, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm, it's funny that you're saying this, I'm also doing this interview on a, re, on a regenerative farm myself. And I, I felt that Great. same thing. You know, I was like, I was doing all this work and I was saying, wait, I need to actually do, be with the soil and work with the soil while I do this work too. I mean, it, w we can do I both, love that. right? I love that. I love that. Because you can't be uh, doing a podcast on soil, um, <laughs> on a cement, on a cemented house, in a cemented house. You're talking about soil um, with a beautiful house with tiles and whatever. So you are talking about soil that you're not, you are detached from. So yeah. you need to be... Um, bear 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 fruit and uh, uh you, you allow your feet to touch on the ground touch the ground yeah. uh in a in a and, you know you know one thing i love about i i i liked about the the podcast the very beginning of the post podcast was very engaging and natural and you know well it brought me back in time when i was um when i was uh, a musician i was doing music yeah so like well it, it's a very unique way i've done a couple podcasts but this was um uh, and it would be my life, a uh, long li lifetime experience, <laughs> a memorable experience ever because um, of the intro itself. It was very, very amazing and oh, it brought me back in time and it brought me lots of memories, you know. Wait, uh, wait, th wait till we uh, celebrate. Uh, well, wait till we celebrate together in Malawi. And when I come out yeah, there, yeah, we'll, yeah, sure, yeah. We'll, we'll have a, we'll have a good and we'll and we'll enjoy it with the farmers and everyone and all the kids are gonna love it too. Um, I I one of the, one one of the things I mean I guess I can frame this question because I I feel like this question is one of my favorite questions to ask my guests and but at the same okay. time I just want to point out I I noticed that it says eighty five percent of the population of Malawi is in rural areas. That's that's pretty interesting. That's very powerful right there, right? Um. Yeah. So, so, so in the sense, my question to you is, what is, what is the hope? Like, you know, if everything happens the way that we dream of and the way that we pray for, and you know, every, all the, all your intentions, Luayo, Luayo, and all the intentions of the community that you're working with and the projects and everybody, the team that you have, what, what is the best that can happen? Like, what's the hope? Like, let's say, you know, a year, three years, five years, what's happening in Malawi? What do you, what do you dream of? What's going to happen? The hope is to have a free world for all Malawians um, in which all Malawians have clean air, mm. food, mm. nutritious food, and um, a world where nobody will, will complain about um, the uh, money, whatever, but mm. a world of free, free environment, free life, free food, free oxygen, free water, free mm. everything so because this would be a point whereby farmers would be able to grow their own food and feed their own families and extra to sell and generate income for their own survival and then they'll have um places which are well covered with trees and shrubs and grasses and forbs and mm. uh, all these plants which uh, will be giving them free oxygen so that's the hope that's the, the desire that's the vision um is to have um a world where everyone will have access to uh, everything for free, but also in harmony with nature, mm. not on the expense of uh, natural ecosystem or the creatures on the planet, but be able to live in harmony with nature, a life where people will no longer talk about snakes as their enemy, but their flame, uh, a life where 
um, uh, snakes will never talk about humanity as they are human beings, as they are enemies, but they are friends. Mm. You know, the sad reality about people, when they're talking about pests and diseases, they always say there's a problem in the garden. You know? mm. Talking about aphids eating part of creation. We're like, no, that's not a problem. Because the same way we look at the tomato as food, um, the American bowens also look at the tomato likewise. It's just mm -hmm. like the elephants. Mm -hmm. Elephants eat uh, maize and pumpkins. So are uh, human beings. Uh, so if the elephants convene and say, there's a problem we found people eating pumpkins, how would you feel? You know, <laughs> so it's, the same thing. <laughs> it's not a problem. We are eating pumpkins, not because it's a problem, but because it's our food. Right. So that's the hope. The hope is to have um, uh, free Malawi for all. I love that free Malawi for all. What's what about you? Like, what's what, Luayo, Luayo, What's hap what are you doing? Like, if 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 let's say the best can possibly happen in, in three, four, five years, what are you doing? Like, where are you at? What are you? What? Yeah, you have kids. Are you have, like what else is that? Like professionally, what's happening for you? So, um, I have a wife and two kids. Yeah. Uh, nice. And uh, the farm, the farm, and the institute was designed in a way that. It provides a good environment, a working space, and food, oxygen, whatever, for for the whole family nice. um, as models. And uh, we have um, a huge um, uh, percentage of postgraduates, like students who are graduating from different universities, and they can't find a job. So we are role models to those um, to those students because uh, people think agriculture is for the poor agriculture is for the old agriculture is primitive um but we're saying agriculture is a billion dollar uh job uh for for those who would like to take it personally and professionally so that's what we're doing and um we are also making sure that whatever we preach we demonstrate yes. we live that way so even if you don't believe me even the farmers if they don't believe me uh, my family will never suffer because we live in paradise where we have mm. uh, all the vegetables we need, we have all the fruits we need, we have all the oxygen we need. Uh, because when we're talking about production, think about um, getting from something, but they forget um, papaya trees bear fruits, but never, but they never eat one, you know. Mm. So when it comes to harvesting, we also need to think about a sense of fair share, giving back to what we got, we got what we got from so um that's apparently what we're doing trying to make sure that um we are reaching out to the masses we started with um 20 farmers now we've trained 3400 uh wow. farmers we've managed to plant over uh, a million trees in a single year and the goal is to plant over um, three million more this year, wow. and uh, if we manage to train one hundred thousand farmers by twenty twenty five, we will have one hundred thousand. Or if we we train one hundred thousand farmers by twenty twenty five, we will have one hundred thousand food forests with um, uh, over two hundred million uh, wow. trees um, planted. So that's that's the goal, and that's what we're doing. That's and incredible. you can see our data if you if you click on that now, you can see. Um, where we're at and you can see our farmers there you see the some of the trees that we've planted of yeah. course the data is not uh, yet um, complete we're still filling in we're still putting in the numbers this is fantastic see, though yeah but you can see how we are, we are putting we are we are we are, we are collecting data and uh, we are documenting our project and putting together what we're doing so you can you can you can look at you can see uh, the name of the farmers um, and then if you click on a farmer, you'll see the information, how much land is got, uh, how many animals is keeping, or how many farmers is got, and then the age itself, the average age. The average age also tell you why we're moving forward or not. And then the club, if you, you click on a club, you'll be able to say, to, to tell why a club is not doing well or not, but because uh, of the age. So maybe there are young people who are, you know, who love leisure, you know, whatever, or oh, there are old people who can't work, you know, the middle middle age who who does both. So uh, yeah. the sum of age there uh, was done deliberately so we can track uh, the right. progress of the project and see. And then there you can see the map. That's our geographical area 
in which we work. If you click on the farmer, it gives you the coordinates and you can locate the farmer. You can look at the- Wow, um, this is great. Uh, you can look at the, at the farm itself and information. And the idea is we'd like to put some more links so that if you click on the farmer, it gives you all information and you can click on the videos. Mm -hmm. It gives you all the videos, all the information, the profile of the farmer there. If you click on the dots on the map, it gives you the coordinates so you can you right. can locate the farm out there. Oh, so I see this is uh, we're keeping track of uh, our farmers and documenting uh, the project. And the, the idea is to make sure that we document everything via uh, quantitative and qualitative data so that people can see, but they can also read um, about um, the project and they can also share uh, the photos or the, the, uh, the reports, articles and whatever. Um, this is uh, this is this is amazing. This is like it, what's what's awesome about this, Loyo, is that we don't even have this in the U.S. Like I've never really? seen anything like this for farmers and for you know, and we you know we care so much. You go to like they're so expensive getting organic stuff, you know. And I always wondered when we like when when they're saying we're getting organic foods from places, why don't we have? Why can't we just see this? Why can't we see yeah. where it's being made? I mean, you guys are doing it, so we can clearly show. <laughs> you know. Yeah, exactly. And then now what we're doing, we have trained the farmers, we gave them a starter pack of tools and seeds and seedlings, and the farmers go and they establish their own tree nurseries to propagate, to start propagating their own trees. Mm -hmm. So now we've got over 150 uh, tree nurseries with um, over um, um, 20,000 tree seedlings per tree nursery. Wow. So the thing is, uh, the, thing is the farmers uh, propagating their own trees, propagating their own seeds, but now we are building a, a farmer's market. So Great. for the farmer's market, the idea is that when the farmers have got surplus, uh, they need to have an exit point, you know, mm -hmm. um, where they sell their produce to generate income for their own survival. So um, the, the farmer's market will be commissioned by January 2023, um, mm -hmm. where farmers will be able to sell their produce but this also be a cafe we we'll, we'll also have a cafe next to it where um, the, the middle class who comes from our capital city which is Lilongwe into um, Zambia um, they'll be able to access organic food and this will be Great. the only organic um, food shop on the main road in the central Malawi nice. and uh, along the main road that goes to Zambia so nice. that's what we're doing we're providing access to markets to the farmers because uh, that's one of the challenges that we realize that uh, a lot of people, including the government and uh, uh, other organizations, uh, they fail to connect the farmers to the markets. Mm -hmm. They can train farmers, they can help farmers grow food, but they fail to connect the farmers to the market. Mm -hmm. This is the reason why we're building the market, so we can uh, connect the farmers to the market so that the farmers can be able to generate income for their own survival. Yeah, and I think about this too for my my cousins that still have their farms in India. And I think you know sometimes we uh, the 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 way the world has changed so fast into being like uh, into being globalized, right? Um, uh, is that we forget that we don't need we don't need to be selling all over the world, right? Like that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is making sure that your community is well fed and taken care of, and then yeah. from there you can sell more, right? Yeah, for sure. This is the reason why we, we're saying we, we're focusing on food security first, uh, making sure that people have got um, uh, good food, they've got um, food year round, but then surplus, they can sell. If we right. talk about the markets before talking about nutrition, the problem will be people will be selling more than they, they consume and that, and that will contribute a lot to other challenges, which includes malnutrition and, okay. and hunger. Exactly. So this is the reason why food and nutrition, that's our basis. And the, the, that's our pre preliminary stage, the first step of yep. first priority. And then se second priority, uh, access to markets. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's super important. Access to markets is really important. And then maybe even the evolution of markets too. I mean, but that's a whole different discussion because, <laughs> yeah, I think, <laughs> I think we're going to have some things come in in the next few years and we're going to have to be really really adaptable, but I think be, practicing permaculture allows us to be adaptable, right? Like we understand if the rains change one season or if things change one season, we can, we can adapt. We're not going to, you exactly. know, forget, right? Exactly. So permaculture is just a design science, but then we need to observe and adapt. We can uh, adapt or we can interact. 
Um, so that and uh, every permaculture system um, brings together um, uh, traditional knowledge with modern science and technology and management principles of specific systems are derived. Uh, okay. This this is this is what uh, differentiates all the permaculture systems. You can visit a million permaculture sites in the world, but they will okay. never be designed the same because. Um, we are taking, for example, when we're taking uh, traditional knowledge of Malawi, it will never be traditional knowledge of India, no. you know. No. Um, so this is the reason why um, every permaculture um, system, farm or whatever must be area specific, site specific, cultural specific. Yep. So when we are saying cultural acceptable, it may yep. be Indian culture or Malawian culture, or American yep. culture, Western culture, European culture, whatever, yep. uh, what have you. So that's the but... beauty of permaculture. It gives you liberty because yeah. if you're protecting agriculture as a recipe on how to bake bread, the problem is you don't even know the basis of uh, the, the basis of baking bread. You just like okay, this is how you bake bread: two spoons, three spoons of sugar, whatever. But you don't you don't have an idea why the first person used two spoons of sugar, you know? right? But you can make your own decisions to say I'll use three three spoons of sugar. Yes, so exactly. that's paper culture. You make decisions based on your own um, um, culture, resource base, or whatever. Right. So that's the beauty of paper culture. It gives liberty to people because considering the fact that we are not the same, we were not no. born the same and we'll never be the same. No. And we have to be okay with that. It's okay. And yeah, at the same time, Luayo, I, I must say that sometimes I've traveled the world and I've seen that when you start to see the same thing, the same pattern in different cultures and different people and same, same stories, it's like maybe there's more truth to that. You know, maybe that's maybe that's where the truth is when people who are from different places share the same feelings or have the same story or have the same practice, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So and then that's one of the things I also like about your podcast because you have diversity. Diversity... Uh, leads to st stability and stability leads to sustainability you know so the more diverse we are the more unite united will be yes. and the more uh, the more resilient will be if we yes. are not diversified the same with plants yes if you own papayas or bananas there will never be sustainability there will never be fertility there will never be resilient yep. you know so um, that's that's the beauty of diversity uh, both uh, genetic diversity, temporal diversity, space diversity, functional diversity, um, your you speech diversity, you name it. But yeah. it depends on what sort of diversity you're talking about or human diversity, plant Spir diversity. Spiritual, diversity. spiritual diversity, music diversity, <laughs> musical <laughs> diversity. <laughs> you don't want exactly. the same, you don't want the same instrument, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, yeah, you don't want the same instrument because the piano would not... Uh, uh, sound the same way as the microphone and cannot be used the same way as the microphone. The microphone can never be used the same way as a guitar. No. So this is the reason why um, when you're talking about music, you talk about harmony. Harmony is what unites uh, the microphone and the piano and the guitar and yeah. the voice, the, the harmony of music. Yeah. yeah, so the same harmony of music, we can also talk about the harmony of agriculture, yeah. you know, the harmony of people, plants animals insects and the like that's one of the things that people forget they believe that they, they, they think without harmony we can exist you know they believe without 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 harmony we can we can we can achieve we can achieve so much but they don't know the um, um imperfection of nature the the variations of humanity and variations of uh, creatures on the planet and that's what keeps us moving and this is the reason why we see a lot of our work moving forward in the communities because we're working in different communities. We're working in central Malawi, Malawi, where we have, we're working in two districts. We're in one district of over 2,500 farmers and in wow. another district we've got uh, over 600 farmers. Now wow. we're spreading to central Malawi with support from ARC, um, wow. where we're working with 600 farmers. And the idea is we'd like to go to the northern region of Malawi, um, where we would like to have um, more farmers there. So the more diverse we can, the, um, yes. the more we will be, become, yeah. And you, and you also learn, like you learn new things and learn new tools. And so, I mean, I, I'm sure there's some of the elder farmers who've been doing it for a long time have, they know how to do permaculture with their, you know, with their land more than sometimes we do. And so we need to also listen to them, I'm sure. I wonder exactly. if that's, right? 
this is the reason why permaculture is the um, combination of, of brings together traditional local knowledge mm -hmm. with modern science and technology. So you do a lot more research on traditional knowledge, and then you combine that with uh, the life we live, uh, the mo modern science and technology. And then you um, choose or develop your own specific principles on how to manage specific uh, specific systems, being it uh, agriculture system yeah. or architectural system or um, uh, whatever, environment or whatever. So um, this is the reason why you need to understand all these things and make sure that um, um, you you know them even better. Beautiful. So in that, in that in that way you learn you learn much you learn a lot as you said um, because the things that you like for example the the crops or food that's dominating the in, in in Malawi Central will never be the same food which do, will do, dominate the, the southern Malawi. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the same staples that people in central Malawi used to eat would never be the same uh, no. crops or foods that exactly. uh, used, uh, people used to eat in, in northern Malawi. So we learn a lot. The more, like for example, um, uh, wherever I go, I tell people, the more people I meet, the more lessons I, I get. And I learn a lot by meeting a lot of people. That's awesome. And and also it makes makes our life rich, right? When we like connect yeah, with different, sure. food, different food. Um, And it's also, also I. <laughs> I imagine it's really good for your kids too to be exposed because they're going to be much more wiser as they get older. Yeah, uh, for the for the kids, uh, the, the the duty of the kids, um, they they know they know our personal stories. My wife and I share the the same background. We come from oh. very poor families. I was born into a family of twelve, and uh, if I go back in time, many other days that we went to bed on an empty stomach because our, our parents mm. could not manage to to grow food and feed our large family. But there's a point that my parents even failed to to pay for my school fees because uh, they had no money. So wow. it was really hard to go to go to the secondary school, which is high school, mm. um, and even university because. Mm. Uh, the parents could not manage to pay for the school fees. Wow. So the reason why we take um, the kids uh, around and about uh, to different places is so, so that they can learn and mm. see how people are suffering. So when we're talking about poverty, they need to see people yeah. uh, you know, suffering in severe poverty and find ways on how to help them. When we're talking about hunger, we need to see. So they, need, so they also learn from our, our practical past experience to what what people are going through right now, yeah. and so when they look at uh, at us and what we went through to where we are at right now, they have that hope that we can also help these people mm -hmm. address the challenges because my parents went through the same the same challenges, same with us, the same with me. Mm -hmm. If you read that my personal story, it's uh, something that I don't I don't like to share, but it's something that I cherish the most because um, it is that passion that keep, keep, keeps me move, moving. Um, and keep the project moving. Mm -hmm. um, then the the anger that um, there are some of us who grew up in severe severe poverty, mm -hmm. and then we we got out of that. We found a way out of that. But there are still a lot of people uh, going through the same. That anger motivates us a lot. Mm -hmm. We keep on doing what we do so we can support as as many people as we can because we know what it feels to be poor. What feel what what it feels to be um, to, 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 to have no food and what it feels to to have no money and so, to not have a, and uh, to not have a system that's supporting us that you feel like you're supported right yeah exactly yeah for sure so the more people we support uh, to us the more happier we, we, we become because you know um, we are trying to address the very same challenges that nobody could could manage and could, could help us to address. Sure. And, 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 you know, I've, I've had some experiences being an educator now. I've been an educator for 13 years. And one of the things I do with a lot, a lot of the kids who I have, who I end up having, who are wealthier kids, like I try to balance, right? Sometimes I work with kids who come from poor backgrounds. because I, I come from a poor family too. So obviously I have a lot of connections there, but sometimes I work with very rich kids, right? But even the rich kids, they have issues, right? Because they have a lot, but they don't appreciate it, right? And then when I go and have them go and be in service, of those who have less when they go and show up and they're, you know, in, a, in different ways, I've, I've brought them to volunteer and help out when they go and see, I mean, I'm sure, I wonder if your kids have this experience, but when they go and when they're of service with those who have less or who are, who are needy or who need support, right. All of a sudden they, 
something switches in their mind or their soul or their consciousness. And they're, they're like, wow, you know, wow, we can make a difference. And there are people who are suffering, you know, um, yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. powerful what happens there, what we can do. Very, very, yeah, it's a very powerful tool. And um, it also makes them grow in a different way. Um, because what they learn in school is very different to what they see on the ground. Um, you know, it's 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 uh, very sad and funny in Malawi to find that uh, most of our schools spend so much uh, on things that are, are not practical, you know. And when you go into the real world, you realize you spend so much time uh, on things that are not practical, you know. Um, so when, when when we take our kids into the communities and when they see these people suffering and they see some of the people who are um, changing, who are able to grow food because of our trainings, it motivates them a lot. Yes. And uh, they they learn a lot and they, they, they know it's practical and it's it's possible to do this than reading in a magazine um, about how you can end hunger in Malawi. So this is how we can end hunger in Malawi. You are on a chair and you're reading in a magazine and you're like, okay, I found a way on how to um, end hunger in Malawi. Uh, versus somebody who is right there in the villages and then um, it's like, okay, this is how we can end hunger in Malawi. Put a tomato there. You can plant a papaya <laughs> there, plant a banana there. And then you come next, like uh, you, you come a few months later, um, you, fi you, you, fi you, you find that the seedlings that you put in the ground producing fruits. Eh? And then yeah, some of these some of these farmers now they appreciate the work and then they give they give the fruits back to us, you know. So That's those awesome. are kind of things. Those are kind kind of lessons that um, our kids learn. But now they are these. Uh, okay, we also work with lots of schools and lots of kids yeah. who come from well-to-do families. Uh, like uh, some of those videos you see, yeah. we were training students from the United States, like from right. big universities mm -hmm. uh, from the United States, like th these these students. But th these students, um, if you're talking about hunger, they don't know what hunger is because mm -hmm. they never, never experienced it. Mm -hmm. Even no matter how, how hard you can talk about hunger, it's not practical to them, mm -hmm. you know. So um, these are also people who whom we try to find ways on how to help them because in their own situation they're also facing all sorts of challenges it may not right. be malnutrition it right. may be the opposite it may be propensity you know right, um, right. so right. um both poor the middle class and the upper class or whoever the rich we are all facing food related challenges that can only be addressed by food you yeah. know in one way or the other only that maybe others have got too much food and they're having challenges because they've got too much food and they don't even know what, where to use and they've got yeah. too much of one food, right. uh, one type of food. But then right. on the other side, when you look at these farmers, these farmers have no food at all, you know. It's a right. food-related problem which can be solved by food, yeah. but then very different situations. Very different. But also at the same time, I, I, I love the idea of coming back to permaculture because that's really we're all in it together. Right. And it doesn't matter what background we come. We need to we do need to come together and just start to understand we are in relationship. Everybody's in relationship, whether they want to believe it or not. <laughs> you know, so as, exactly. as, as, <laughs> as much as we can come together more, it's going to be a big part of our, us finding harmony um, with yeah. nature and ourselves. Right. People care is the people care is central to the way we design our systems. People care is the way is central to the way we we design our life. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So the more the more we understand the value of others, um, the less problems uh, we have on, uh, on our lives because we live because you live and uh, you live because uh, I live. There's, exactly. no without, there's no you without me and there's no me without you. We depend on each other. Okay. Uh, so permaculture is all about that. So it's about harmony. Uh, we, are just, we are just a collection of individuals, you know, yeah. sharing the same planet. Uh, and we all have got a role to play in our own different way. And without, yes. one, uh, without one person playing his or her own role, um, nothing happens. So that's the belief in permaculture. That's why that's, there's that sense of... Um, um, people care um, right. in the way we live, the way we design systems, the way we make choices, right. 
um, yeah, and then the way we distribute uh, resources and the like. So that's that's the beauty of permaculture. This is the reason why we we, we promote by promoting permaculture. People think permaculture is agriculture, yeah. you know, and people think permaculture is all about growing food, but it's 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 beyond that. Um, it's it's beyond that. It's powerful. So, so I mean, I, I feel I feel we could talk forever, but I want to respect your time and our audience's time. But let's let's close it with this. I mean, what are there any last um, words of um, motivation you have to share with the people that are going to be listening to, whether they're in Malawi or they're around the world, whoever listens to this? Any words of how to be, how to engage, how to civically engage, how do you politically engage, how how do you make a difference in the world? Do you have any words of encouragement or, or perspective that you can share? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Being a role model. We we just need to be role models. If you are talking about addressing hunger, we need to be role models. You can't be addressing hunger uh, without having a garden, without having a food, without growing food. If we are talking about addressing political challenges, we need to be practical and we need to be practicing that. If we are talking about gender, we need to be practicing that. So that's that's one of the things that I wanted to share. And the other thing is that uh, talking to the world, because I'm talking to the world now, uh, there are there are people who are funding unsustainable projects to promote the problems we are suffering, and one of the reasons why we are suffering so much in Africa is because of the people who are, who are funding problems. You know, those people who are funding unsustainable projects. So one of the things that I wanted to share to the world is that if if there's somebody out there who would like to join hands and make a difference, we are here to work with you and uh, help. Um, make a difference in, uh, in, in in the world, not just um, in Malawi, but uh, globally. Together, we can make a difference. But all we need is to make sure that we're channeling, we're able to channel the resources, the right uh, funding to the right people in right projects and sustainable projects and projects which are resilient, but not um, uh, supporting um, the very same problems. And uh, I would like to shout out to ARC because um, we they, they are supporting us a lot and uh, we are achieving a lot. Um, because of their partnership. So we'd like to continue our partnership with the agroforest regeneration communities, but not forgetting, um, we are also working with uh, other other organizations um, in partnership like Opulence, which is in Malawi. We are also working with um, um, Autumn Climate Action of UK. And we also work with lots of other organizations, um, um, the Scotland Malawi Partnership. So, um, and, um, the United Methodist uh, Church of Israel Action. Oh wow! So these are amazing. People, yeah, so these are these are people from across the globe who are uh, taking part in one way or the other uh, to make sure that um, our work is simple in Malawi. So we, I, I can't uh, close the podcast without um, acknowledging their their partnership and uh, their support towards the work that we're doing in Malawi. Beautiful, and thank you, Luayo. I think this was. I mean, I'm so excited about this conversation and maybe we'll have you back on with some updates of what's going on. And maybe maybe next time we do like a podcast, we could bring John on and a couple other people and we can have it be more of a, a productive conversation of hope and maybe ideas that we can kind of throw around too. What do you think about What do you That'd feel about great. that? That would be great. So <laughs> there's, uh, there's, yeah, John, Hannah, uh, Stella, there are a lot of people. There's uh, uh, Sean in Guatemala. Um, these are also partners. Um, yeah, so I think it'll be good to have um, one one podcast for all of us and share ideas. Yeah, be, I, I'm all about let's, let's let's come up with ideas. Let's let's plant those seeds because that's how that's how we create the future. Is we have to plant the seeds. We have to nurture the ground and the soil, right? So. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, brother. I really appreciate it. You're awesome. Thank you. I thank you so much. Thank you.